let's take up the issue uh, development or the environment. Uh, nowadays, everyone recognizes the importance of the environment uh, in the process of economic development. Uh, however, uh, there is a difference in uh, adopting, say, uh, emissions targets, uh, like greenhouse uh, gas emission targets. Uh, side A is to adopt the uh, target that is to regulate the ratio of emissions to GDP so that the GDP is allowed to grow uh, so long as the uh, greenhouse gas emissions will grow slower than the uh, GDP. But well, side B is to regulate the absolute level of uh, greenhouse gas emissions so that the, there will be no more you know, the, uh, greenhouse gas accumulation in the air. Of course, to avoid the uh, global warming and the uh, climate change. Which target uh, to be adopted depends on uh, what kind of data or statistics you are looking at. Uh, first, total emissions versus per capita emissions. When you look at the total emissions for each country, China is of course the number one polluter, surpassing the United States, and the, uh, India is the third. So the China, US, and India are the three major polluters in that order. So when you look at the statistics, it is China, along with the United States, India, should regulate the absolute level of emissions uh, because the numbers are huge. Whereas, uh, uh, if you look at the per capita emissions, there's a difference between the advanced economy like the United States, which has a very high number of uh, per capita emissions, and the uh, Developing economies like China and India, which have relatively low numbers there. In fact, China has only one third of the US level in terms of per capita emission. And in India, that's one tenth of the US level. So, according to these numbers and statistics, one might argue that the United States should regulate the absolute level. But China, India, and other developing nations should allow to grow further, to catch up the United States economically, while reducing the emissions per GDP for energy efficiency. The second point is to look at the current emissions or historically cumulative emissions. As we saw, in terms of current emissions, China is number one, followed by the United States. But historically, of course, U.S. and the European countries have been using the air and polluting the air for a long time uh, in the process of uh, long industrialization for centuries. Therefore, total accumulated pollutants is very high, like... Uh, 38 in North America versus only six for China because China only recently started, you know, uh, its industrialization. Therefore, opinions differ, uh, and very difficult to reach an international agreement on uh, how to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions. In the past, Kyoto Protocol. Uh, is probably the only major international agreements in this area. Uh, that is to regulate, the, of course, absolute level of emissions. Actually, that's 5% reduction in total you know, emissions uh, the over five-year period beginning 2008 relative to uh, the level in 1990. And the major countries, like European countries, Japan, and other advanced nations, and as well as some developing countries are joined to uh, commit themselves to reduce 
emissions absolutely. But not the United States, China, and India. Uh, they haven't ratified this agreement. The, the important part of this agreement is this flexibility mechanisms, including the international emissions trading, which is very well known. If a country uses up all its pollution rights, uh, still would like to produce and pollute, then they, uh, the country can buy emission rights from other countries which still have the emission rights left unused, and vice versa. Uh, and also, uh, international projects are allowed to reduce emissions in developing, developing countries, but that counts towards the reduction uh, in the emissions in developed countries, so long as that country initiates and pays the cost for the project. So where the emissions are reduced really doesn't matter so long as the uh, participating countries can uh, will initiate and then bear the burden. Uh, the Kyoto Protocol has already expired and new agreement uh, is expected to be reached, hopefully, uh, later this year or so. And the Differences are, as I said, emission targets. Side A, insisting on this ratio regulation, and China, India, and many of the developing economies have been insisting on this kind of regulation. But China lately changed their mind after talking to the President of the United States, and then China and the United States kind of agreed to join the new treatment, new agreement to be reached to regulate the absolute emissions uh, along with other countries, 200 uh, nations. Of course, with the flexibility mechanisms. And so the question is whether new agreements will be reached uh, in the upcoming uh, United Nations Conference on Climate Change. Uh, in Paris, actually, in December 2015, uh, and the basic principle has been approved by these 200 nations uh, last December in Lima, Peru, and the, we'll wait and see whether a new agreement will be reached among these 200 nations, including the United States, China, possibly India, and other developing nations uh, in the near future.